Why do we need to have electrical continuity through the full length of our trailer frame? Well, it's actually pretty important. Hey there outdoor YouTubers, it's Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors. Alright, now today's video is part 5 of a multi-series of videos on how to fix your trailer lights. Okay, um, if you go to my channel Knetter's Practical Outdoors, go to the trailer light playlist and you will find several videos that deal with the different aspects of maintaining, troubleshooting and keeping your trailer lights working. Okay, but for this video, this video is part five, and we're going to be dealing with why you need to have electrical continuity through the full length of your trailer, and how to check if you have electrical continuity through the full length of your trailer. Quick little overview on how your trailer light circuit works. All right, you got your individual wires that go back to the fixtures, okay? You've got your brakes and your blinkers and your running lights, okay? And those wires carry the current or the voltage that actually illuminates the bulbs or the LEDs. But every electrical circuit needs a return path back, okay? And most trailers do not actually have an individual wire that goes to each fixture as the return path back, okay? Um, if you look at a, a plug like this, this is the trailer side plug, this is a four pin flat, and the ground or the negative or the return path back for all the other circuits is actually this white wire okay but very few trailers will actually have a white wire going back to each individual fixture how it works is oftentimes this white wire uh, will be immediately grounded to the frame of the trailer okay and then the frame of the trailer becomes the conductor then if you look at the fixture like this one this fixture doesn't even have a white wire okay it just has a brown and a green so the return path back is actually when you attach these studs, when you bolt this to the frame of the trailer, it becomes electrically connected to the frame of the trailer. That's why you have to have actually a good electrical connection on these studs to complete the circuit, okay? Now, a fixture like this one does have a white wire, but as you can see, it comes you know right from the factory with this little ring on it. And oftentimes this ring will either go right on the stud as you mount it to the frame of the trailer, or you could possibly take this and drill a screw into the frame of the trailer and ground it that way. But this white wire is the return path for the other circuits in this fixture. But either way, the return path back actually utilizes the frame of the trailer. Okay, So you have to have good electrical continuity from each fixture to the frame of the trailer and then from that area of the trailer all the way back up until the frame of the trailer meets up with this white wire that'll be uh, grounded, screwed down, electrically connected to somewhere, okay? So basically, the trailer frame is used as a white wire, yeah. all right? Now, if you're still a little unclear about that, I did do a separate video on uh, how the trailer light circuits work, okay? Uh, again, go to my channel, go to the playlist, trailer light playlist, and it's called Fix Your Trailer Lights Part 2, How the Circuit Works, okay? But just keep in mind, that we do need to have good electrical continuity throughout the entire length of our trailer frame for our lights to work. All right. So if you're having trailer light problems, okay, um, one day they work and the next day they don't. They'll be working, but then you go down the road and they're kind of in and out and flickering back and forth. Okay. Um, that's not going to be a bulb, right? It's not going to be a fuse. It's not going to be a burnt out LED fixture. Um, in, that, uh, in that scenario, you may have a grounding problem. So we're going to need to check and see if we have good electrical continuity 
all the way from uh, our fixtures in the back, all the way through the trailer frame, all the way to the front of the trailer, and all the way to this white wire on our plug. Okay, we need to check that. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to have to break out our multimeter, and we're going to have to check the continuity throughout the length of our trailer. Okay, now if you've never used uh, a multimeter, all right, um, we're back to the trailer light playlist again. I did do a video on that, okay? Go there, uh, it's part three, how to use a meter to help you troubleshoot uh, problems uh, with your trailer light issues, okay? Check that out. Um, it's pretty helpful if you've never used a multimeter before, okay? So we're gonna take our multimeter, okay? We're gonna go back to the fixtures, and with this fixture, because we have a white wire, we are gonna have to make sure that this white wire has a good electrical connection to the frame of the trailer. Okay, so we're gonna check that, all right? Now, if we didn't have a white wire, like with this fixture, we need to make sure that this stud has a good electrical connection to the frame of the trailer, all right? Okay, that seems simple enough. But there's a couple more things to keep in mind. Now, this fixture might be bolted to a bracket, okay? And this bracket might be just bolted okay to the frame of the trailer if it's not welded uh, if it's just bolted sometimes there can be a problem there if the uh, if the bracket was bolted on and the trailer was uh, heavily painted you might not have a good electrical path through where it was bolted on okay so just measuring in this case from the white wire say to just this bracket isn't good enough you'll actually have to measure from the bracket also to the frame of the trailer and then anywhere else where there might be a bolted junction point on the trailer, okay, anywhere where there's not a solid piece of metal traveling up the trailer. Another place that this happens sometimes where you'll lose electrical continuity is on tilt bed trailers, okay? Uh, it's almost a design flaw in some of them. Even though they're two independent pieces, uh, oftentimes the trailer manufacturers depend on there being enough continuity, enough contact, to complete the circuit and have that good return path back. But that's not always the case, right? We know things start to corrode and rust and they start to slop out and get loose and there might not be a good electrical connection at that point on a tilt bed trailer, okay? So uh, I'll show you a little way to kind of remedy that. Uh, another point that sometimes there's problems is on the coupler of the trailer. You know, that front coupler that goes over the ball Sometimes that coupler is just bolted onto the frame of the trailer. Well, if there's corrosion, if, it's, if it was bolted on over paint, you may not have a good electrical connection. And if this white wire is actually grounded down onto that coupler, it kind of depends on going through that bolted coupler onto the frame. It depends on the electricity passing through that point where it's bolted on, okay? And there's a couple different things if you have a problem there. You can actually ground this white wire a little further back, bypass the coupler. Of course, you can tighten the coupler, try to get a good electrical connection uh, from the frame to the coupler itself, okay? But oftentimes, this white wire will be grounded right on the coupler, and then the coupler is bolted onto the frame, and again, that's a potential for a problem. So we have to go through and check each individual point where we could lose you know, good continuity, whether it's uh, because of a tilt bed trailer, whether it's because of a bolt-on attachment, something that's been bolted on over paint, that sort of thing. And you'll want to go to all the fixtures and make sure each fixture is grounded properly to the frame of the trailer, and then from that point on the frame of the trailer, it needs to have a good continuity reading all the way back to this white wire, okay? Some of the bolt-on problem areas, you may just be able to tighten them up and get that uh, good continuity back. But if you can't, you may have to take them right off, clean them up with some sandpaper, uh, scrape away some paint, that sort of thing, and then tighten them back down. And that may bring back that good electrical continuity through that point. So if you do suspect that you have a uh, electrical continuity problem going through the tilt area of a trailer that you might have, uh, what you can do to remedy that is actually run a jumper wire from one side of the tilt to the other and then that wire will be your good path through that uh, kind of that suspect tilting point, okay? Now, make sure you give uh, that jumper wire enough slack 
So if you do utilize the tilt uh, feature on the trailer, that you won't pull it and break it off, you know, that sort of thing. Now, another thing to keep in mind, as you're doing these continuity checks throughout the frame of your trailer, okay, you got to make sure that you get a good connection to your meter leads, all right? That might mean working through a little bit of paint, okay? You might have to scrape away a little bit of paint. Even if you have a galvanized trailer, sometimes you got to, you know, you got to push that meter lead uh, with a little bit of force uh, into the frame of the trailer to make sure that your meter lead is in good contact with the frame of the trailer, okay? Because you don't want... Uh, just a problem uh, trying to get through the paint make you think that you actually have a continuity problem in the frame of your trailer when really it's just your meter leads not making a good connection. So make sure you've got a good surface to work with at each little point that you check. So quick overview. Again, go to each fixture. If it has a white wire, make sure the white wire is grounded to the frame of the trailer. If it does not have a white wire, make sure the studs that attach to the frame of the trailer are uh, grounded real well to the frame of the trailer. Then take your own meter and just move your way toward the plug along the trailer frame. And don't hesitate to kind of wiggle and shake things too as you're taking your own reading across different points. Sometimes, like I said, the, the coupler can be loose. Sometimes the bracket can be loose. Sometimes where the, uh, if you have a tilt bed trailer, where that uh, trailer tilts, okay, you might have a good ohm reading and then you kind of wiggle it and then you don't, okay? So basically, from this white wire, essentially the pin that is associated with this white wire, we need to have good continuity through this white wire to the frame of the trailer, through the frame of the trailer, back to each individual fixture, and then we have a good path back to complete all our circuits. So yeah, check all that stuff out. That, uh, that might have been giving you problems for a long time and you didn't even realize it, okay? But anyways, guys, I hope this helps out, and remember to hunt, fish, laugh, repeat. This is Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors. Hey, thanks for watching, and God bless.